Welcome to the beautiful unit operations lab on the second floor of Swearingen. This is where some of your UO2 experiments are carried out. I guess some UO1 and UO2, but most of these are actually dynamics and controls experiments. Today we're going to be doing a demo with this four pressure tank system. They're actually not real tanks, they're really just pieces of pipe that were welded on the ends to make them a tank, but they hold a volume of air. We have high pressure air that comes as a utility out of the wall from a large compressor down in the basement. That comes to our system through these control valves into a manual valve, into a tank, through another manual valve, out to another tank, through another manual valve, out to the atmosphere. So it's just air, should be totally safe. Now, we have two different types of valves, I guess, a few different types of valves, but the manual valves, if you look at them from the side, they're flat on top, like we talked about in class. The actuated valves are actually round on top because the computer will send a signal to this valve to move the valve stem up and down. So that valve stem is going to change the flow rate of air through the actual physical valve. To move that valve stem up and down, we have a rubber gasket, and you change the pressure on top of that gasket and it will push the valve down, or if you release it, it will go up. There are different types of valves. Some are normally open, some are normally closed. Depends on the safety situation. When you remove, if you lose the air supply, do you want your valve to fail open or closed? And since there's no air right now, this looks like a normally open valve because it's in the you can see the valve is in the open position, but the stem is all the way out. When we first built this, we had some issues because the valve would not go to the same position every time. You change the pressure and it would get stuck. So there's something called stiction or sticking friction. So we had to have a fix for that. But basically, before we go too far, I wanted to mention there's a box here. This is something we don't usually draw in our diagrams, but it converts a wired signal from the computer. The computer sends a signal to a box and you get this voltage signal to go to a box, this other black box, which takes in high pressure air from the wall and it regulates it. So inside of here, it regulates that signal. So if this is a zero to five volt signal, it will regulate the pressure on top of this control valve up and down so that we can uh, adjust that valve open. So this is converting the digital signal to a pneumatic signal to make the valve go up and down. The digital signal comes from a special data acquisition box that allows for two-way communication between the computer, the PC, all the way to this box. And the box sends a signal to another box that changes it to pneumatic pressure to make the valve go up and down. Confusing. It gets worse because like I said, we had sticking friction and the valve wouldn't go to the right spot. So we had to get what is called a positioner. And the positioner is the other box on the back of this valve that measures the actual position of the valve. And it acts like a control system, a low level control system. Our computer is not sending a pneumatic signal to the valve anymore. It's in sending a pneumatic signal to the positioner. And it says basically, take the valve to 50%. And the positioner says, okay, that's my set point. I'm going to be a controller and make sure the valve gets to 50% on the open or closed for the valve. Does that make sense? So basically, we're still sending a signal to the valve, we're just sending a set point for where we want the valve to be, at 50%, 90%, 0%. Now, the high pressure air comes in. We have lots of valves, but basically we're gonna treat it like, or lots of tanks. We're not gonna do complicated modeling today, we're just gonna do basically one tank. So basically the control valve can be adjustable. These manual valves are set, they don't generally change. So that's your valve coefficient is a constant. It allows the valve flow rate into the tank. At some point we have a measurement device attached to the tank. So that measurement device is measuring pressure. And you can see it looks like a lollipop. It sticks off the side and as you change the pressure, the needle will go around that dial. At the same time, there's a piece of electronics there that is exposed to the tank. It converts the pressure value to an actual measurement to go back into the data acquisition system. 
Now, for this setup, I believe we're using zero to five volts. So zero might be all the way closed in the valve, five may be all the way open. And the same thing for pressure, there's a pressure range, so you measure that zero to five volt signal and then interp interpret, oh, is that 40 PSI, is that 50 PSI? A lot of times in industry, they use four to 20 milliamps because if you're working around high voltage or high, like big motors that have electromagnetic fields, they can create spikes and noise and voltage signals but they don't affect the current signal. So you actually send current through your wires. So the current would be four to 20 milliamps, which means if it's four milliamps, that's on the low end, 20 is on the high end. If it goes to zero, you know something's wrong. If a voltage signal goes to zero, you just think it's on the low end. So a four to 20 milliamp signal is one way of avoiding it. In other cases, I've seen uh, people put in actual fiber opti optics so you have smarter signals, which is basically like running a, a internet in your plant. So you wire up your systems. You can have more communication. You can have smart sensors, smart valves that report on what's going on. If they think they have a problem, you can get data, the more things you can do. But fiber optic, if you have that ability, you could actually avoid noise on your wires because it's using light, but it's more expensive, more difficult to set up. So this system, we're gonna ignore the other manipulated valve on the other side. We're gonna open and close the valve and look at a pressure. And that's all we're gonna to do today. When I start this, we get a real-time strip chart. I'm gonna make my valve start at zero. There is no air going to the system. So everything's basically at zero. I need to turn the air on, it's gonna get loud. So a little bit of air is bleeding across that valve, it looks like, until it could get actually closed again. Now, I'm going to change that valve from zero to 50, and I will let you watch the valve as it goes up. It wasn't instantaneous. Watch that again, I get to zero. I can make it go to 100, all the way open. But we're going to go to fifty is our steady state. You can see the pressure measurement there should be similar to what we're seeing on the screen with their calibrator at three points. Now we're going to let the system get the steady state, which means the slope needs to go to zero. We need to get this to be flat, basically. So this red line, when there's a pressure in one of our tanks, it's pretty close to steady state. It's not quite there, but we're getting there. So this is how long it took to steady, get to get steady state. Now, if we change this valve from 50 to 60, just a plus 10 change in the input, You see a response. You see that dynamic response to the pressure. You can hear it if you're in here. It's a little louder because there's more air flowing. So that's called a step response. Once we get to steady state, we can put a negative 10 change and go back to 50. So that looks like a rectangular pulse in the input. And our model should capture some of the behavior of the dynamics. The pressure did not instantaneously jump to its new steady state value. There's a steady state gain related to this. So the plus 10 change in the input valve has some change in the PSI here. So there's a relationship for the gain of this process, assuming that steady state and that steady state in the process. Calculate that delta Y plus like four PSI for a plus 10 change. Alternatively, you could calculate the delta Y from this point down to here. That'd be a negative delta Y for negative 10% change in the valve. Now, if we change this from 50 to 60, oh, we did 60 already, let's do 70. We're gonna double the input. So the input change was doubled if this were a nice linear system, the change in the output 
would double. So we have this normal steady state for 50, which is about, in this case, it's about 30. For the data set you're going to be working with in the lab, I think it's like 40. So you have to look at the data set and get the steady state when the valve is at 50. You can see that actually for this step change, the dynamics changed. It more rapidly got the steady state. The smaller step change took a long time, didn't even really get the steady state there. Let's go back to 50. So if we were having had a true linear system, this change here would be half the size of the second change in the output because the input went from plus, two, plus 10 and plus 20. If you had a nice linear model, it would double. For your MATLAB work, you're going to fit one of these responses. It doesn't even have, you can even see that the positive change and the negative change going up and down give you different rates of change as well. So this is a pretty complicated system if you want to get a really accurate model. Let's do a negative 10 change. Let's do a negative 20 change. So we'll go down by 30. So the second hump corresponded to a plus 20 change from 50, 50 to 70. This guy is a minus 20 change from 50 to 30. So again, for a linear system, the size of this change, positive change, should be the same size as this negative change, but it looks like it's going to be more substantial here. Again, your model can't fit all of these. Just try and get one of these response curves, maybe this nice one here, or somewhere in your data that looks nice and try and fit that one. And don't worry about the model fitting everything else. But as a little reminder, when you're fitting your model, you have to get the steady state values. So we're going to assume that steady state relates to, in this case, 50% of the valve. So our normal steady state is going to be 50 for the input because you have to convert the data to deviation. So in MATLAB, you're going to subtract 50 from all the valve positions so that your input is really going to go from 0 to plus 10, 0 to plus 20, 0 to negative 20. And your response is going to go from like 45 to 50, back to 45, and then up to 60, and then back to 45, and then down to 30. So that's our manipulated variable. You have on your response data that you've been given another set of data that represents a disturbance, an unmeasured change. And we can simulate that with a manual valve. I'm going to open this valve and create a change in the tank pressure. I'm going to do that right about now. But we're not measuring that valve position. We don't know what that valve is what's going on. That's a disturbance. Some Yahoo could go in and open that valve, close that valve, and it will put a system response, a forcing function, an unknown forcing function that disrupts our process. We cannot model that because we don't know exactly when or to what extent that valve changed. So all we can do is model the other parts of the process where we have inputs that are changing, pushing the system around. So your model won't even start to fit this. It doesn't even know what the disturbance is hitting that system. But it looks very similar to all these other responses because, again, your first order plus time delay model that you're going to fit to this data should fit these approximately. You get your steady states accurate, then you worry about getting the steady state gain, and then you worry about changing the time constant and time delay values. Okay? The MATLAB portion shouldn't take you too long to complete. Good luck. Now open this all the way so you can see the system. So for the high pressure, the high values, you get a very rapid change. So this is an interesting process again because the dynamics depend on where your operating conditions are and the gain depends on your operating conditions.